Hello everyone, welcome back. Ashala here bringing you Soul Sampler number 32. Insights for this upcoming week from December the 26th, 2021 to January 2nd, 2022. By next week, we will have already turned the page and welcomed in our new year. And I am very truly hopeful and inspired about what is in store for us in this upcoming year. Next Saturday, I'm going to share with you my overview reading for the collective for the entire year of 2022. And I will also be sharing an interview with a dear friend of mine who is a master at Feng Shui, uh, and she will be sharing some insights with us about how to prepare for this really big transition. I mean, we go through it every year. Uh, New Year's and, you know, stretching from basically winter solstice, uh, December 21st, all the way to the Chinese New Year, which is usually somewhere around the end of January. And it, it really is this turning over of the new leaf, of the new timeline, so to speak. And never before in our history has this been so significant as what it is right now? So I really want to bring some support in to help you prepare, to help you make the most of this incredible transformational time. So let's just look in at this week briefly. We are starting off this week with a tremendous surge. I'm hoping that many of you took an opportunity to really have a pause and perhaps you're still relaxing and enjoying some downtime. Very good. Look at the energy. You know, it might feel to you like, well, if I just pause for too long, I'm never going to want to get up off the couch. <laughs> And what I see here is actually the opposite of this. And my older daughter is an amazing, wise wisdom keeper around this exact practice of being able to really pause and relax and take some true downtime and how incredibly productive and full of energy we often come out of those times with. The, the restorative energy. A lot of it relates to how we spend that downtime. And if we spend that downtime cramming our brains full of data and information, it's not really a downtime. Um, you know, we don't have to sit in absolute meditation and do yoga postures the whole time, but really giving our brains and our bodies a time to rest and recharge. You know, all of our ancestors throughout all of antiquity in most regions of the world understood the importance of taking rest time. And I feel this is something, you know, it's epidemic in our modern era where we just don't know how to turn off. We don't know how to turn off our devices. We don't know how to turn off our minds. And we don't know how to create space to have that pause. So, what I'm seeing is for those of you that have cultivated that over these last few days and will continue perhaps in the next two or three days to do so, you have a tremendous opportunity to feel this internal renewal coming in like really strong. We've got the King of Wands here in the, in the house of self. The ego, meaning it's like a, just a new wave of uh, inspiration and motivation that comes after in the house of Pisces after this retreat after this rest and that motivation really gets moving I want to say in the next seven or eight days so feeling by the end of this week like just after the turn of the new year you're you may start to feel your engine revving. And this is pretty exciting because what a way to welcome the upcoming year. Now, um, we are still looking at a lot of disruptive information coming in. And um, it feels as though what I'm seeing is like counteracting information. So 
you may find in this next week that you hear one version of a story and then you hear another version and perhaps even three or four different versions of a story. So it feels very important, I'm sensing in the next 10 days, to not get attached to any of these versions because what they're showing me is that the wheel is kind of transmuting or metabolizing all this information. The wheel meaning the energy of karma of our collective evolution is working that information and it will be ready for us to integrate in about 10 days time. So please do not be alarmed if you get a piece or two of information this week that feels like you just spins you really out. Uh, take some deep breaths and let spirit do more of that integration because like I said, I feel like you're gonna get the antidote or the counter information soon after and then even not having to sort that out yourself, but let spirit begin to show you how those um, polarized pieces of information are actually already integrating themselves without you having to solve the puzzle. I feel like this is important for us going into this next year is to just relax, take some deep breaths. You know, the ability to hold different aspects of information in equal balance without getting overly anxious, like, oh my gosh, I've got to make a choice. I've got to solve this and I've got to choose a direction or I've got to align with a certain version of reality. And what I'm seeing here is take a breath and let spirit integrate more on your behalf. Now, I love that I'm seeing synchronicities for this week. We have, again, um, some threes showing up and we were looking at those last week. We actually have three threes again this week. And so what the synchronicities are looking like here is they're looking like they have to do with aligning us with people and opportunities to work with others. Now, this week, you may also experience some kind of, um, I, the word derailment is coming up and, and please don't be alarmed about that, but what I'm feeling here is mentally uh, a bit of a pretzel knot around something that you thought you was pretty sure thing in terms of your personal, um, I want to say like purpose or your offerings in the world. So something may turn into something else this week. And what it's doing is spirit is trying to align you with a better version of your potential. And when you get a block, often for those of us that are, you know, um, entrepreneurial say or involved in different projects, you know, when we get blocked, it can feel like, oh no, I've made a mistake. I'm on the wrong path. I've done something wrong. It can feel somewhat punishing. And it's really important this week not to take that personally to say, all right, this is blocked. This means spirit is going to be presenting me with something better. And again, just hold tight. There are some big decisions coming up here. I feel like between March and June of this year, there's some really big long range paths to choose from. And many of us are looking at multiple versions of these timelines. I'm almost getting like that they're all pretty good, but we may look back at this particular six month period, like five or six years from now and go, oh, I wish I would have thought more about the choices I was making before I jumped into the first thing that looked good. You know, when you look back in your life and you say, oh, I wish I would have taken a bit more time to make that decision. That's what I see is coming up. And so we already this week are getting little hints at where spirit is trying to nudge us towards our greatest version of our potential. So please do not feel defeated if something you thought was a sure thing starts to look a little wonky and you're being pulled slightly off track with that. The other piece that is really powerful this week is our emotions related to our values. Um, like, it, I've just never seen anything quite like this before. We have the king and the queen of wands sitting right next to each other in Scorpio and Sagittarius. 
So this is a very deep, powerful moment of inner reconciliation about what we value. And it might feel to you like you're just ready to throw yourself into something to really stand behind what you believe. And um, there may be a sense of a kind of almost futility or fatality around that. You know, King and Queen of Cups together, that is quite high drama. And again, um, not to say that these feelings aren't absolutely valid and real, but to not entirely identify with this version of yourself. Um, you know, this is a phase. This is an integrative phase. You likely will feel more empowered and less, again, like I said, the word futile or fatalistic comes up with regards to our emotional states this week. And again, like I said, um, you know, the guides are saying this is like high school drama class and you are right now in that tragic role where you're really like going, you know, this is the end of the world and I'm throwing myself into these causes or into my stance or into my version of reality. And again, like I said, take some breaths, notice spirit is trying to gently nudge you and maneuver you through this very, very powerful time. I feel as though we're looking at another couple of months of this deep emotional work. Yes, it's so important to get in touch with your truths, your values, absolutely essential. But getting in touch with them alone is the most powerful work you can do. You don't have to act on them immediately. You don't have to fix the world's problems once you've identified your truth. You don't have to like throw yourself as a sacrifice at the troubles that you see in the world. You can just hold that position and trust that spirit is going to begin to show you exactly how and when to maneuver in the most effective way. This is a lovely, lovely gift for us this week. And um, also with regard to partnerships and relationships, there is a clarification around our choices. So again, this powerful energy of choosing, it's very likely that many people will be making powerful choices in the next six months about partnership, about saying yes to a partnership, or saying I'm complete with this something and releasing a partnership and possibly both. So again, a real clearing a real deep identification with the truth of who you are. And I want to end this off speaking a little bit about our beautiful High Priestess that's showing up in the area of community, friends, and allies. And like I said before, I really get that we are going to be sort of networked, like almost spirit is up there pulling the strings and networking us with the right people, lining us up. Um, and really all we have to do is say, thank you. I'm willing to see what this could turn into. We don't have to absolutely identify, you know, um, what these relationships are about exactly, but our willingness to be present and notice that we are connecting in a meaningful way at this time. There's something releasing and it's going to take, I'm almost getting two or three years, this energy of our need to do everything independently. You know, we've been fed this for decades. My goodness, us in Western civilization, we've been pretty much brainwashed that independence, you know, it's a dog eat dog world, everyone for themselves. You got to look after yourself. No one else will. And all those things that we've heard over the years. So this is a, a collective kind of psychosis that we are slowly waking up out of and realizing, you know what, just surviving on our own, even if we could in a time like this 
is not really optimal for us as human beings. We are creatures of culture and connection. So spirit is trying to get us together and all we've got to do is say, I accept these synchronized network connections and I'm willing to see where they're going to lead. Have such a beautiful week. I look forward to seeing you on uh, perhaps New Year's Day and to give you a perspective of this upcoming year. Many blessings.